Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Jerex26 here, and of course, my better looking other half, Divinity. Hi. So we've been watching the Joe Cat's Guides to D&D. &D. Someone had recommended that we check them out. We've been doing a playthrough of Final Fantasy XIV, and he has some crap guides to Final Fantasy XIV that are absolutely hysterical and pretty damn informative too. True story, yes. And so <laughs> people had notified us that uh, he also has crap guides to D&D, &D, and we watched the crap guide to the DM, DMing, as well as the his crap guides to the classes. They were so good. <laughs> I absolutely love them. So good. <laughs> so he's got a lot of these crap guides. So we're going to check out some of the other ones. So this is the crap guide to D&D 5th edition character sheet. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Let's do this. All right, guys, let's get going. You may think you know D&D, but guess what, nerd? You don't. Not until you understand what the fuck is all this shit. What is this? What is this? Why do I need to know animal handling? The fuck is Arcana? The shit are hit dice? What's a proficiency bonus? Why are Electrum pieces so stupid? Well, strap in for a formal education, ass hair. I'm gonna reteach you how to do math, because let's be honest, you still use a calculator to add and subtract single digits. Welcome to a crap guide to D&D. <laughs> That was fire. <laughs> All right, pause a second. Yeah, you know what? That uh, was a fire intro. Someone coming, you know, brand new to D&D. Divinity and I, long-time D&D players, yeah. long-time MMO players as well. That's kind of how we got introduced to Joe Cat's guides. Mm -hmm. um, but someone coming in new to D&D, I got to admit, it can be a little overwhelming with the just a sheer amount of information. And the character sheet, for sure, it can oh, be, sure. I think, simplified a little bit, maybe, or <laughs> kind of streamlined a bit. Yeah, that would be nice if you could. So let's see what he has to say like, about it. Yeah, like I love how um, usually when you play D and D, like your whole first session, you might achieve finishing your character sheet. Oh, literally, that's always <laughs> <Maybe>. usually <laughs> session session zero. Yeah, that's the goal get your for like your first down. like two or three hour Four session hours later. is to complete a, a, a <laughs> exactly. character sheet. All right, let's go. This is your character sheet. Your character cannot exist without it. However, it doesn't always have to look like this. It could be a simple flashcard, a scribbling in a notebook, or an app on your phone if you like being spoon-fed like a baby who laughs at the phrase pee-pee-poo-poo -poo watermelon. And when playing as a character in D&D, you will refer to the character sheet whenever you have to roll the various kinds of dice that decide the outcome of your actions. Many are intimidated by this mighty thingy's magnificence, but yep. mourn them ye shall not, for they be weak-ass bitches. It looks like a whole lot, but get a hold of yourself and take it one step at a time. The first person to voluntarily stick something up their butt didn't get anywhere by crying about how intimidating it is to stick something up their butt they just did it and look how far we've come first of all at the top we have the wow. basics name class race background and dumb buzzfeed quiz results these things will determine later things so don't worry about those things until we come to them later but if you don't know what you want those to be yet that's okay we can mosey on over to this tower of pimps which will be the most important part of your entire sheet ability scores these are your basic stats, the strengths and weaknesses of your character, and the main determiner of whether you're going to be snooping or spooping when dungeoning those dragons. Strength is your strong, heaping muscles! How much shit you can carry, how well you can push or pull heavy objects, and how well you can make your pecs dance. It also determines the weapon damage for most melee weapons, but we'll get to that later. Next is dexterity, the little bitch version of strength. It's your hand-eye coordination, reflexes and balance, and how well you can hide your handheld when you hear mommy and daddy stomping up to your room like Godzilla. Where strength is about how you can plow through a table being thrown at you, dex is about how you can limbo walk under it. Dex can also be used with what are called finesse weapons, which lets you pick between the two physical stats when rolling attacks and damage in case you skipped arm day. Constitution is your general vitality, how healthy you are, your endurance, and is used for rolls as frequently as a millennial eats breakfast. It mostly only affects your overall hit points, but it's still fairly important and can be treated like the amount of candy in your pantry. You only realize how little you have once you see somebody else with lots of it. Intelligence is dumb. That is, unless you pump it up with big galaxy brains and become smarter than the average bugbear. It's used for general knowledge-based checks involving things like recalling info on history, magic, religion, and most importantly, defeating things with facts and logic. To generalize, it's book smarts. So you know a lot of things. It's also used as a spellcasting modifier for both the wizard and artificer classes. Oh, don't worry, we'll get to spellcasting later. Impatient no. bitch. Wisdom is one that confuses a lot of people because they think it's just like intelligence. And I'm willing to bet those are the kinds of people who think cheese and mayonnaise can coexist on a sandwich. No, wisdom is more your street smarts and also general senses. It's knowledge based on practice and experience. No, not that experience. And it's the difference between knowing if a plant is poisonous and knowing that the person who told you it was poisonous lied about it because they don't want you finding their beloved lemon tree, you damn lemon whores. It's also the casting ability <laughs> of clerics, druids, and rangers. <coughs> Finally is charisma, how to tell if your character fucks. It can mean anything from your general likability to approachability wow. to public speaking ability to betting ability. It's your charm, your confidence, and general way with people, whether it be luring them into a trap or aggressively scaring them so bad that they actively jump onto the trap out of fearful compliance. And it's the casting ability oh for goodness. bards, paladins, sorcerers, and warlocks because remember, you gotta look pretty 
pretty for the boss patron if you want to get that big eldritch bonus. Now that we're done covering ability scores, we can go over how you get them. And there are three generally used methods. If you're a wee baby who needs to meticulously make your perfect OC or else it won't be faithful to your precious self-insert, there's the point buy system, which works like a basic video game. All your stats start at 8 and you have a pool of points, usually 27, to distribute between them all. With the cost going up to 2 points per ability score increase higher than 13 and the cap being at 15. If you hate math, that's too bad because there's going to be loads of it later, but if you want slightly less of it, there's also standard array, which gives you the numbers 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, and 8 to arrange on any of your scores. But if that's Ew. still too much choice and you want to put your character into the grubby hands of Arn Jesus, there's the most widely known yes. method, which is rolling 4d6 and dropping the lowest oh, number. This can get favorite. you scores anywhere from a whopping 18 to a poo poo dookie 3 if your DM is a sadist and doesn't do grace <laughs> rolls, but often results in overall chunkier stats. Whatever method you Love do, it. each number corresponds to a second number. Who boy, are you overwhelmed yet? You have to keep track of two whole <laughs> numbers. What a crazy catastrophic <laughs> conundrum. Well, don't you worry your stubby earlobes because those big numbers aren't really that important. Their main purpose is to determine a smaller number called a modifier, which means mm -hmm. you can totally ignore this number when you actually start to pillage the village. There's a fairly simple mathematical equation to figure out what each number's bonus is, but I know you're a dumb, dumb, silly pants, so here's a chart. Now, will you stop crying about it? The reason the ability modifier is important is because it's what you add to your dice roll whenever they're applicable. So if you have a lot of strength, you're gonna get a little extra oomph whenever you need to punch the vending machine when your chips are stuck. Have low nice. charisma and you're gonna have a hard time convincing the janitor that you weren't the one who broke right, it. Keep in mind you can still roll. Like, admittedly, it is a very roundabout method of just coming up with the real number you need, which is the modifier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's always been known that it's kind of like uh, you're doing yes. a, a lot of crazy, you know, rolling and calculation and, and accounting just to have your modifier. Uh, Let's I, just do modifiers. <laughs> yeah, I honestly think I was like three campaigns in before I finally started to get a hang of like what any of this stuff meant. Like literally I was like, you say roll the dice, I roll the dice. And then you told me what the number is and I plug it in the hole. <laughs> it, it took a while to like figure out, you know, what everything means oh, yeah. and how your rolls correspond to your your stats. But once you get up and running, though, with it, it it's really fun. And it's kind of neat that it's a little unpredictable because for many of these methods, there's a little bit of luck to, you know, how you're going to do when you are up against a monster or whatever the case may be. True. All right, let's go. You can still roll great with low stats and roll badly with high stats. But having high ability modifiers makes it so your rolls are more in your favor. Now that you have your scores all placed and your modifiers figured out, now we can determine where those modifiers go, which <coughs> means we can look at this spaghetti jumbly mess of words. Now don't go running a mommy calculator just yet, it's so easy even Fighter Man can figure it out. At the top here are your saving throws. These are your defenses and resistances, the various bad bads that want to smush you up and turn you into a turd. Things like traps, area of effects, most spells, and that little voice telling you that you're making poor decisions. You don't roll these on your own most of the time, just instead your that. DM will ask you to make them whenever you're put in harm's way. And you see these little spaces? That's where your ability modifiers go. <gasps> That's right! This way you can refer to these numbers to add to your rolls whenever they come into play. Look how smart you are. I could just give you a wedgie right now. Next are your <laughs> skills. These are the various different capabilities your character is able to do in a regular game of D&D. And each one is affected by your ability scores, just like your saving throws. And just like your saving throws, there's this trusty little space for you to put your awesome stonking and or poodoo modifiers. And how can you tell what ability mod goes where? Well, you foolish mortal wombat. Just look at this helpful little parenthesis that tells you what it's attributed to. Go down the list and now you have a reference for what your character is good or terrible at. Got high decks? Well, congratulations, your sleight of hand means you can cheat at poker better. Bad at intelligence? Well, then you're probably not going to know who President Dingle Bloopy Noop is during the history segment of Are You Smarter Than a Cobalt? Now, we're not quite done yet with this llama lot. We got to go over what proficiency is. Proficiency. Proficiency is what separates <laughs> the fake gamers from the hardcore top 500 ultra platinum uber pros. And you can find it in this little dingle. Starting at level 1, your proficiency bonus is 2, and it increases as you level up more and more. Basic gist, it goes up by 1 every 4 levels. This number is added to anything you are proficient, aka trained with. And as far as saving throws and skills go, this will be signified by a little check mark. And which ones those little check marks go into is determined by a combination of your class, background, and on rare occasion, race. For example, a fighter has proficiency in strength and con saving throws, so wha-bam, wha-bam! Add those numbers. Nice. They also nice. get to choose two skills skills to be proficient with from this list according to the parrot ham bone. Normally you would pick your own, but here we're just gonna go athletics and perception. Whoop -bang, whoop -bang. Let's say you're also a hermit. You get these two skills to be proficient in. Whoop -bang. Whoop -bang. Always remember, whenever you're proficient with something, it means you get to add this sexy number on top of whatever appropriate ability modifier that's added to the dice roll you make. Proficient in athletics, roll a d20, add strength mod, add proficiency bonus. <laughs> And if at any point <laughs> nice. you forget what you're proficient in, just refer back to the player handbook for your race, class, and background. Congratulations, you now know how 90% of Dungeons & Dragons works. You feeling smart yet? You feeling like you can wrestle a spider cow? Well, sit the hell back down because we're not done yet. <laughs> now that we're done with the stat portion of the character sheet, we can look at the combat portion. This section is what you refer to when your DM says clickety clackety, you're about to get attackety. Up at the very top wow. left is your armor class, or AC for short. This by default is 10 plus your dexterity modifier. No, I said the modifier, not the score. Pay attention. However, this can be increased by the different types of armor. Whichever 
whichever one you start with will depend on which class you pick. Next is initiative. Whenever an encounter begins, initiative is rolled and determines who goes first and who stacks dice for the next half hour. This number is the same as your dexterity modifier and is added to your initiative roll at the beginning of an encounter. And this last little block is speed, which is how much you can move across the checkerboard each turn. Each square equaling 5 feet of movement if you're normal and use the imperial system, and is initially determined by your race or how well you can try to convince your DM that your character ran track in high school. Below that are the hit points, maximum, current, and temporary. Your maximum hit points is like an anime fan's figure shelf after about two conventions. You can try to fit more, but we all know any extras are gonna have to sit on your desk next to all your empty cups. It's determined by your class, each one having its own size of hit die plus your constitution modifier. Because D&D is a communist game and believes in universal healthcare, at first level you always receive the highest possible roll for hit points. But for every consecutive level you can either roll for it or take the coward's way out and take the average increase instead. And then your current hit points are pretty obvious. It's the amount of blood you still have inside your body at the moment. Reach zero and your character <laughs> skips 50 seconds ahead of this video. Lastly, there are temporary hit points, which go above the maximum hit points and you only ever get on special occasions via spells, special abilities, or the local grandma lizard folk just made you a delicious bowl of her legally ambiguous performance enhancing herbal soup. Keep in mind a couple of things. Temporary hit points are kind of like the skin tight leather jackets from the 90s X-Men movies in that they don't stack on top of each other and you have to pick which one you want to keep if given multiple of them. And if you're on the floor dying from a stab wound, putting it on won't magically stitch it together. And what are these two lonely <laughs> boxicles? Well, my stupid student, they're yin and yang, two sides of a coin, one for when you're alive and the other for when you're unalive. The former being your hit dice. You have as many of these as your player level and can spend them whenever you take a sit for as long as a single episode of a Netflix original show to recover your hit points. What size of hit dice is once again determined by your class and you get them back whenever you binge an entire season's worth of a Netflix original show. But what do you do when you're bleeding out while dressed in a 90s teenager's idea of a sexy badass superhero? <laughs> if your current hit points ever reach zero, you have to look over on this touch-deprived box and start rolling death, death saves. saves. Death saves. Where you gamble with Grim each turn and roll your most well-behaved d20 to see whether you luck back to life or have a very awkward reunion with those bandits you killed five minutes ago. Roll a 10 oh, or higher geez. and you gain a success, nine or lower and you get a failure. Two failures if you uh -oh. drop a fat stinky nat one, three successes or a lucky 20 and you hop back to one hit point. Three failures and your character sheet becomes the DM's ass wiping bum, bum, bum. supplies. Attacks. This section is where you throw in all your various flavors of stabs. If you have a weapon or attack of some kind, you write it in here and refer to it during combat. Say it's a sword and shield, yes, both. You would write down the name of the weapon here, then next to it is the attack bonus, aka how accurate your weapon is. No, not the damage. This number is determined by your strength modifier for most weapons, unless it's a ranged weapon like a bow, in which case you use your dex mod instead. Or if it has the finesse property, which allows you to pick either. On top of that, if you're proficient with that weapon, you can add that good old bonus to it too. But how do you know if you're proficient with a weapon? Let's put a peen in that. Alternatively, if it's a <laughs> spell attack like Eldritch... Your attack bonus becomes oh. your spellcasting ability modifier. Let's take a bard, for instance, which is the slut stat, plus your proficiency <laughs> bonus. Whenever you roll a d20 to see if your attack lands, you get to add this number to the total. Alternatively, alternatively, if it's a spell or special item like a bunch of ball bearings thrown in attempts to recreate Home Alone that requires the enemy to make a saving throw, you can put the saving throw in difficulty class there instead. But how do you know what that number is? We're gonna put a peen in that too, shut up! Once you have that number, to the right of it is the damage roll, aka how aggressively you're going to introduce the enemy's face to your sword. This is included oh. in the description of whatever weapon or spell you were using. Whether it be a light jab at their insecurities, a proverbial pounding of pornographic proportions, or 86 wow. fire damage in a 20-foot radius, just fire <laughs> <laughs> Most weapons also fireball. include your strength modifier to the damage, unless once again Love it's a ranged weapon which uses dexterity or a finesse weapon which uses either. The difference being that you don't add your proficiency bonus to this roll unless something says otherwise, and most spells don't add any additional modifiers unless their wall of text explicitly says so. And lastly, make sure you include what kind of damage you're dealing so your DM can know that your psychic damaging vicious mockery won't do much against a revenant because their self-esteem is already in the grave. To uh -huh. recap, when you <laughs> attack, roll a d20, add this number, which is these, then if you hit the enemy's AC, you roll these, and add this number, which is this. Spell casting. Good job. Perfect. We're gonna take a little break from the main sheet to look at this sheet that has a list of all your accomplishments. Oh, look at that, it's blank. This is the spell sheet. If More you're playing sheets. a character that's capable of casting the spells, sheets. then you're gonna take a gander over to this sheet whenever you cast them. Up here at the top, you can put your spell casting class in case you're absurd and tend to forget which spells go where, your casting ability, which will <laughs> depend on the class, your spell save difficulty class, and your spell attack bonus. So hey, remember that peen we put in for spells in your attacks? Well, it's time to unpucker that sucker because here it is, the spell save <laughs> difficulty class, also known as DC. This is referred to when Whenever you cast a spell that requires the enemy to make a saving throw. And how this is calculated is 8 plus your cast mod plus your poof bone. Once you've got all that figured out, the rest <laughs> of the sheet is for keeping track of all your spells and slots. You write down the spells you have for each level, how many slots you have total as well as expended, and if you have the spell prepared or not. Note, only certain casting capable classes apply. Please refer to the player handbook or any other supplementary book regarding your class to find information on <laughs> methods you have to go about obtaining and preparing spells. What? Oh Unsure of what spell slots are because your brain's too smooth? Well sit the shit back dit, you get and listen up. The weakest level of spells are called cantrips, or sometimes level zero if you don't care about hurting their feelings.
spells. And they can be cast as many times a day as you want. First level spells and upwards, however, require a resource called spell slots to be cast, or else you'll have to find out the hard way that casting Thunder Wave without having your beauty sleep will make the life or death battle with the Underlord of Darkness a lot less <laughs> epic and a lot more smelling like last night's kebabs. And if the oh, name dear. Spell Slot makes things too confusing for you, you can use my personal preferred name for them, Mage Bullets. How many Mage Bullets you have per spell level and how you recover them is determined by your specific class and level. So just like 99% of this entirely redundant video, if you want more information, it's best to read the parking himbo. And keep track of your goddamn slots. Because yes. if you don't and just so happen <laughs> to be able to cast five Mage Hands a day under Section 3, Chapter 1, Paragraph 12 of the Code of Gelatinous Noobs, the DM has full rights to eat your dice. <laughs> 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 After looking in the Not mirror and taking dice. some serious self-reflection after the apocalyptic chasm of the divide of the fanbase that was 4th edition of D&D, <laughs> Wizards of the Coast started to take into consideration for the next version of D&D what gameplay features they wanted to invite to future parties and what gameplay features they needed to take out back and tell to think about the pretty space butterflies. One such old yeller victim was the virgin <laughs> alignment chart being completely overshadowed by the Chad personal characteristics, each one being a useful tool to remind you of your character's interests, motivations, shortcomings, and sexual fantasies. You never know if you're gonna end up having to fuck your way out of a problem, so it helps <laughs> me prepared and know exactly what position would be the most in character. Personality traits are the broad strokes of your character. Likes, dislikes, interests, manners, whether or not they think something's a soup or a salad. Ideals are their drive, their principles, and what they vote for during election time. Or if they don't care about voting at all and prefer to stay home to catch a once in a lifetime live marathon rerun of Animal Planet's The Most Extreme. Bonds are personal Valley. attachments and experiences they've had. It could be a good friend, a fond memory, or your favorite glow in the dark bouncy ball that always seem to bounce a little bit weirder than all the other ones. And lastly, flaws, which 99% of the players don't actually understand and will probably put something inconsequential, like clumsy. Not me though, because I'm flawless and perfect. Perfect. Oh, you don't think so? Well, could a person with weaknesses do this? All oh of this God. other shit. Now remember that peen we put in wondering how you know yes. what weapons you're proficient with? That goes down here, by the way, and that, along with basically every other section we've yet to cover, can be figured out in this next part, which is what I like to call the copying it over from the book section of the character <laughs> creation, because that's basically Easy. all you do for the rest of the sheet. I gotta pick a background, check the player handbook. What proficiencies do I get? Check the player handbook. What about feats and traits? Check the player handbook. What's my starting equipment? Check the player handbook. Or any other supplementary book relevant to your chosen race, class, background, all of those guys, Jennifer's guys, everyone, right? Nice and with all that again. done, congratulations. You now have a completed and fully functioning character sheet. Ready to be used once, then wow. completely lost, then found again once you've already redone a second one. Or if you're Perfect. lucky, one that will be used consistently over the course of several years to the point where there's more eraser skid marks than pencil lead, and the once firm sheet of paper turning yes. as soft as a tissue person's dick after seeing you in the shower. Now you know how to oh. use a character sheet. You're welcome. <laughs> I got to write your backstory. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh. That Yo, was that was great, dude. That I, was great. I have to say, I felt super called out when he said that you're going to spend the next half hour stacking your dice because I stack my dice all of the time. Continuously. <laughs> I Continuously. Am always stacking my dice. Divinity's always stacking her dice. Usually yeah. I can stack like one set of dice, but then when I try incorporating a second set of dice, like I hit some kind of limit and they all fall over. <laughs> but yeah, I, I love stacking dice. So I was like, he's talking to me. Dude, another <laughs> another Joe Cat win, man. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, going amazing. into this, I'm like, you know, how can you make the character sheet is typically kind of, you know, can be complicated if you're new to it. It's kind of yeah. dry and boring, I feel like. True. And I was like, how are you going to make this like, you know, fun and exciting in some sort of way? And of course, he was able to do it. <laughs> yeah, of course he was. That's so funny. <laughs> that was awesome. All right, guys, that was the crap guide to uh, D&D character sheet by the amazing Joe Cat. That was awesome. Thanks for watching with us. <laughs> Absolutely. And we will see you guys in the next one.